What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlook here. Shouldn't be talking about Halloween in this video here today. More specifically Halloween 7 and how it ties into Halloween ends. Um, by Halloween 7, I'm not referring to the actual Halloween 7 that we got, which is the beloved, I would say also hated, Halloween H2O. Not that Halloween 7, not the official one, but a Halloween 7 that could have been, that seems to have been a big inspiration to what ultimately ended up being Halloween ends that just released not too long ago in October the conclusion to David Gordon Green's Halloween trilogy now this is coming from an old article uh and interview from Daniel Ferrans who we know was the screenwriter for Halloween 6 the curse of Michael Myers I also want to shout out beyond the mask for bringing this interview to my attention I recall reading this interview in high school but at the time of course I was not doing this so I didn't have a place to talk about it but since you brought it up in a very nice video I just got finished watching I'm going to go over this in my own video and share my thoughts on this and how I kind of do see where they have taken inspiration from this and used it in Halloween ends that's not to say that they blatantly did it but it's funny how you can come across interviews like this and then it reminds you so much of what happened in Halloween ends so Daniel Ferrans was asked during this interview with Halloween Daily News where his story would have gone in Halloween 7 we know in Halloween 6 at the end of that movie uh, we find out that Michael is under the cult of thorn under control by the cult of thorn Dr. Wynn is involved in it uh, and Tommy Doyle is back in the movie played by Paul Rudd and Jamie Lloyd dies has a has a son now named Steven and going into Halloween 7 Daniel saw his story going into the fact that we were going to find out this is a quote from him we were going to find out that more of the town of Haddonfield was involved in and it is this much bigger conspiracy. It would have played more like the Wicker Men. In my Halloween 7, it picked up very much like Halloween 2. Immediately after, with sirens coming, all the killings in 6, because Tommy was seen as this obsessed Michael Myers fanatic, they blamed him all for it. They said he did it, that he was a copycat killer. So he's being hunted, and at that same time, Michael Myers is still out there, so he's trying to stop him, and more victims are piling up. It was kind of a race back to Haddonfield. The story took place between Smith's Grove and Haddonfield field kind of a la the hitcher it was a road movie then we got back to Haddonfield we then when we got back to Haddonfield we realized oh my god they're all in on it this is the biggest conspiracy ever this little American town has been infected by this and their fear of Michael has brought him back to life and caused them to kind of worship him in a way the whole story was Michael versus Tommy and how's Tommy going to get out of this now here's the thing with that Obviously, from what you have heard, I'm sure while I was reading that, many of you were going, hell yeah, that sounds like Halloween Ends. Because while Halloween Ends didn't have a whole town involved in the conspiracy, you had a whole town obsessed and fixated on the character of Michael Myers as this boogeyman that they couldn't let go of, that they created a new boogeyman by their mistreatment towards Corey Cunningham, who was innocent and in, not completely innocent, but for the most part, I would say, as it pertains to what happened to the little boy at the start of the movie. I can't remember his name. What's bothering me about that is I, I, I want to remember his name. I actually just now remember it. It's Jeremy because that, that kid was so annoying. Um, we know what happened with him and Jeremy at the beginning of the movie, and that was an accident. But yeah, he's he's looked at as the villain all throughout the movie. He slowly becomes the villain, etc. I guess in Daniel Ferran's Halloween 7 with this concept, he wanted to do with Tommy Doyle. Tommy doesn't doesn't become Michael Myers. He doesn't become a copycat killer. He becomes somebody trying to prove his innocence and it's allowing you, the viewer, to have someone to root for. So I, I like this narrative angle a lot better than how Corey Cunningham's story went. However, that's not to say that Corey Cunningham's story is, again, the most poorly thing ever written in a movie. It's just the fact that I feel as though he is misplaced. Had he been introduced from the very beginning and it was a slow descent into madness, that would have made this far more compelling. I feel like a lot more people would have been able to connect with him. And then you would not have the arguments of so many plot threads that were established in the 2018 movie and kills being abandoned because you want to shift focus to this guy that a lot of people are like, who the hell is this? So this aspect of like being like the wicker and having the whole town of Haddonfield involved in the Tommy Tommy Doyle movie we could have gotten. I do not like that. I also do not like seeing a bigger conspiracy going on where the cult of Thorn is actually somehow infecting the whole entire town. I do not like that at all whatsoever. 
I would prefer that we never see something like that in a Halloween movie. I'm glad it was pretty tame in Halloween Ends in the sense that it had nothing to do with a cult to our knowledge because we never really found out the direct source of anything going on with Michael Myers, thank God. Uh, it never had anything to do with a cult. And it also never had a lot to do with uh, just a bigger conspiracy going on outside of the people of Haddonfield just being paranoid, holding on to the, the terror Michael Myers has caused him and just the, the trauma of it all. And thus they seemingly need him to survive it's so much that they're creating their own new boogeyman by making Corey out to be this new big bad versus just letting letting things die out and letting Michael Michael Myers die out. So what do you guys think about this original idea for Halloween 7? Do you see the similarities between that movie that could have been and now the movie we've gotten with Halloween ends? Would you have preferred to see this as Halloween 7 instead of Halloween H2O? I'll go out and say that I would have preferred to see how this movie that he has in mind actually play out over Halloween H2O. And when I say I would have preferred to see it play out, meaning... The concept of it all has me intrigued to see how this would have been received. Not that I would ultimately prefer this over H2O, but because it was never made, a part of me would have loved to see it get made. To see how it would have been received, how it would stand the test of time right now in its current in the current times that we're in, if it would have aged well, and again, how this whole bigger conspiracy with the town of Haddonfield would have played out, and how Tommy Doyle would have cleared his name, because again, it would have been a Michael versus Tommy scenario. In Halloween Ends, you don't have a Corey versus Michael scenario, you have a Corey and Michael versus Haddonfield scenario. So it, it leaves you without somebody to root for. You have a very interesting and thought-provoking character in Cunning Corey Cunningham, but the liking of him slowly goes out the window the further the movie progresses. So you guys can let me know what you think about this original idea for Halloween 7 down in the comment section below. And I'll leave a link to the article actually in the description, which again is from Halloween Daily News. It's from 2014, from the original Halloween 6 screenwriter going over his plans for Halloween 7. This is a good read. It very much so gives me the idea that they bought borrowed a lot of this or at least were inspired by this concept and tweaked it into making their own original story for Halloween ends you guys can let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below I would love to know your thoughts on how you would have if you would have preferred to see this story play out for Halloween 7 or if you're fine with the H2O movie that we got like I am let me know all that again down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notification that you never miss a video in the description i will have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video